Hello and welcome to Weather on the Go. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday morning out there. Lots to talk about in this video here. We had severe weather uh, on Saturday evening. We also have severe weather coming up here on Sunday today and also into Monday here as well. And through the rest of the week here, we got a very active severe weather pattern here as we have a large ridge, a lot of heat here coming into the middle of the country. And along the northern edge of that here, we do have some severe weather as we head through the rest of this week. We'll also look ahead to a little bit of the tropics here as well as the tropics across the east Eastern Pacific start to warm up here as we head through June. So welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday morning out there. A lot of severe weather reports here coming in from yesterday's uh, storm event here into uh, Saturday across portions here of southeastern Nebraska, eastern Kansas, and across much of the northern plains and midwest region here. We did come in with seven tornado reports here, especially across far southeast Nebraska and the northeast Kansas. 49 uh, wind reports with seven of those significant. Uh, 33 hail reports with five of those significant with a total of 89 severe weather reports here um, across portions of um, the uh, northern plains into the central plains here and also the mid-Atlantic. Also did want to note a tornado report has been submitted across portions of northeastern Oregon, uh, northeastern Oregon State here from yesterday as well. So something worth noting there. As we move in through the afternoon and evening today, there is a slight risk ac across three different uh, areas here today. Uh, the largest one here across the northern plains down into the central plains here from northwest Kansas, northward here into west central uh, uh, Nebraska, much of South Dakota getting into southern North Dakota, western and northwestern portions there of Minnesota, and then getting back to the west here across far southeastern uh, Montana, northeastern Wyoming. Also another smaller slight risk area across downstate Illinois, downstate Indiana. Indiana and getting into western portions of Kentucky and then as well over into portions of southern Virginia and to northeastern North Carolina as we head through the afternoon today with a large marginal risk here covering much of the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic, the Midwest and getting up into portions here of the Intermountain West as well. Looking at specific hazards today, kind of general wind risk here across these areas, you know, going along with that 5 to 15 percent here, you know, the marginal to slight risk here for wind as we head through the day. There is a 15 percent hail risk across portions of downstate Illinois into downstate Indiana, western Kentucky, but a more significant hail risk across portions here um, in that 15 percent or hatched area of hail across portions of western South Dakota, getting into west central portions of Nebraska, northwestern Kansas, and into southeastern Montana and northeastern Wyoming, we could have here uh, supercell thunderstorms developing with hail that could be in excess of two inches in diameter as we head into late this afternoon and into this evening here uh, as we head through time. And then also a 5% tornado risk across some of these areas as well in the far southeastern Montana, northeastern Wyoming, into western South Dakota, and a large 2% area of tornadoes here from northwest Kansas, western portions here, and central portions of Nebraska getting up into South Dakota and up into portions of North Dakota and Minnesota as well. Also some small and you know lower end tornado risk areas here two percent across downstate Illinois downstate Indiana into western Kentucky and into southern portions of Virginia getting into northeast north uh, northeast North Carolina as well so kind of looking at the overall picture here we got that jet stream pushing farther to the north we got a lot of that heat building to the south across the central and southern plains and the portions of the deep south the desert southwest and that is feeding off the you know instability to the north and that's where you're going to see all that active storm track as we head towards the rest of this weekend and then getting in through much of next week. Like I said, we got temperatures rising well into the 90s, even some lower 100s, especially centered on portions of northwest Texas into western portions there of Oklahoma. And then the northern end of that heat wave here, we do have temperatures still into the 80s across portions of Nebraska, maybe some lower 90s across western Nebraska. So a lot of fuel for these storms. And that will come here with, you know, the dew points rising well into the 60s across this area here. And that is going to contribute to some CAPE, some convective available potential energy up to around, you know, into the yellow here you can see 3,000 joules per kilogram the greens that's kind of a little lower to about 2,500 so still some pretty decent instability and then some pretty decent instability down here into portions of the Ohio Valley as well into uh, downstate Illinois kind of around 4,000 joules per kilogram and then getting over toward about 2,500 joules, joules per kilogram across portions here of North uh, North Carolina into southern portions of Virginia with that other slight risk and here across the area today 
Also a pretty decent signal for some supercells, especially across portions of north, uh, the northern plains and the northeastern Wyoming, western portions here of uh, South Dakota, northwestern portions there of Nebraska, getting into far southeastern Montana, some supercell storms capable of producing tornadoes as we head into later today. Even some supercells possible across downstate Illinois, getting down into downstate Indiana, western Kentucky, and then over into southern portions of Virginia, northeastern North Carolina here as well, but just a lower end risk in those areas. So we're kind of looking at what the radar could look like as we head into late this afternoon. Pretty quiet here, maybe a couple storms popping up around the Ohio Valley here, some elevated type storms with some smaller hail, some gusty winds through late this afternoon. The main threat will be here as we head in toward the evening time frame here, uh, toward the dinner time frame, and then shortly thereafter, we got some supercells popping up here across portions of the Rockies, getting into the western plains, and these could be big hail producers here of two inch or larger hail. Also, I got to watch for some rotation with some tornadoes and even that damaging wind risk here as well as we could have winds in excess of 60 miles per hour with these storms here across portions of South Dakota, getting down into Nebraska, eastern Wyoming, and then getting down here into maybe even Colorado as well. And you got to watch these storms across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic as we head into the evening hours as well. These will start to blow up even further as we head toward after the dinner time frame into North Dakota, especially down to the South Dakota portions of West Central Nebraska. Got to watch for some big hailers, some tornadoes here as well, and that damaging wind risk will start to pick up as these storms kind of start to congeal into a MCS or mesoscale convective system as they push into the eastern Dakotas and into western and northwestern their portions of Minnesota. And this will kind of drive the severe weather threat as we head into our Monday. We'll have kind of an MCV or what's called a mesoscale convective vortex that will develop and kind of drop more to the southeast and kind of feed on those, uh, feed on that energy here for tomorrow's uh, system as we head into Monday. But for today, we could have rainfall amounts approaching an inch or even exceeding an inch across portions of southern North Dakota and especially northern South Dakota where that uh, MCS or mesoscale convective system type of complex will be. That's where you can have some pretty heavy rainfall across those areas. Also get some heavier rainfall across portions of western uh, Minnesota and down into Nebraska with some of those supercells here as well. Like I said, as we head into your Monday, we got two separate areas we're watching. We're watching a cold frontal boundary with an upper level shortwave trough here pushing in from the Pacific Northwest. We got a lot of convergence along the front here, a lot of forcing for ascent. So we have a lot of lift across these areas here from uh, the Dakotas back into southeastern Montana, northeastern portions of Wyoming, and all the way up here into northwestern portions of Minnesota can't even discount some severe weather getting up here into portions of, you know, southwestern uh, Ontario, maybe getting up into the Manitoba area as well. And then a more significant area here I'm watching for severe weather here across portions of far eastern Iowa, southern Wisconsin, getting in through northern Illinois, including the Chicagoland area, and then getting down towards Indianapolis into north central Indiana, southern lower Michigan, and through much of the state of Michigan, or much of the state of Ohio, rather, we could have a kind of an MCS complex here developing from the MCV, the mesoscale convective vortex that will be long lived and produce here maybe a strong bow echo or even a derecho potentially across these areas. So that will be something to watch. And like I said, this is pretty significant already here a day out or so. On the Storm Prediction Center's day two, a wind outlook here showing a 15% significant 75 mile per hour or greater type wind here from northern Illinois, southern and southeastern Wisconsin through southern Lake Michigan, getting into southern lower Michigan, north central portions there of Indiana, and then getting into portions of western Ohio as well. Also that 15% wind risk here across the Dakotas into northwest Minnesota, northeastern Wyoming type areas as well. And then as we head to the hail risk, you got a 15% hail risk across the southern Great Lakes region, and then you got a 15% and even a smaller hatched hail risk across portions of northwestern South Dakota getting into northeastern portions of Wyoming where you could have that two inch or greater in diameter hail, and then that tornado risk is going to be pretty decent here as well across the Dakotas and in northeastern Wyoming, southeastern Montana getting up into far northwestern Minnesota, and then another 5% area here of tornadoes along where you can see that bow echo here across portions of northern uh, Illinois, southern Wisconsin, southern Lake Michigan, and then the portions of the Ohio Valley as well. And same thing here on Monday, that, that ridge will continue to build with that heat wave building into the Mississippi Valley and the Tennessee Valley into the southeast, and you have that jet stream pushing farther to the north, so a lot more humidity will be building as well. You've got that short wave trough kind of digging into the desert uh, or the Pacific Northwest, rather, and that will continue to move its way eastward here through the day on Monday, producing that severe weather with that cold front and that dry line sending up across the Dakotas down into portions of western 
uh, Nebraska here as well. And then as we head into Monday here, tomorrow, we're going to see a lot of warmth here, a lot of hundreds here developing across portions of Kansas. We could have some lower 100s down into southern Nebraska. you got some 90s moving over toward the St. Louis area, lots of 90s and hundreds down into Texas and Oklahoma, over toward Arkansas here as well. you got some dew points possibly rising all the way into the lower 80s across portions here of central Indiana toward central and northern Illinois, and that will provide some very strong instability, if not even extreme instability across these areas. We could have instability across portions here of the Midwest here from the uh, South Dakota all the way through Iowa into North Central Illinois into Central and Southern Indiana approaching 6,000 joules per kilogram. So this is some serious instability and some serious energy that these storms could feed off of here as they dive to the southeast across this region on Monday. Also seeing some pretty high-end type of uh, supercell uh, composite values across northern Illinois, far eastern Iowa, into southern Wisconsin, and down through Indiana, values that are higher up here on the scale. So maybe some supercells embedded with that bow echo, definitely possible, and that's where that tornado risk here does come into play. So let's kind of look at the radar reflectivity of how this could work out. This is the HRRR model here um, from last night, and this is really showing some decent um, Decent uh, storms moving through portions here of northeastern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota toward the Rochester area, and then storms rumbling up toward the Minneapolis-St. Paul area here as well. Maybe some frequent lightning, some heavy rainfall, some damaging winds and hail with this as well. But as this traverses to the east and southeast, we'll have some supercells developing across far, northeast, uh, for, far northwestern Illinois, southwestern Wisconsin as we head toward the late morning, early afternoon. And then we'll have this complex start to develop across far northwestern Illinois into southwestern and southern Wisconsin, maybe far eastern Iowa, and this will start to bow out as we head towards southern Lake Michigan, northern portions there of Indiana into the afternoon hours, and this will continue into the evening hours and the dinner time frame here into portions of Ohio, maybe extending down here towards uh, northern Kentucky as well. We got to definitely watch for some strong damaging winds that could be over 75 miles per hour with this, some large hail, also a few tornadoes here along the leading edge where you got that rotation here along the leading edge of that bow echo. But we're Wherever you see that here bow echo or the uh, storm complex move through, you can see some very heavy rainfall. Like I said, those dew points will be well into the 70s, the lower 80s, so a lot of moisture to be wrung out in the atmosphere, and that's where you can see rainfall amounts locally up to around 2 to 4 inches across these areas. Right along the Illinois-Wisconsin state line, that's where we can see some pretty heavy rainfall as we head towards Monday afternoon and evening. Then looking back to the west here where we have a cold front, that shortwave trough coming in here from the Pacific Northwest. We got some quiet weather here across the Dakotas here during the mid to late afternoon here on Monday. But then we got some supercells developing as we head towards late Monday afternoon across northeastern Wyoming, southeastern portions there of Montana, getting into the western Dakotas. And this will continue to blow up with some explosive storms as we head into the western Dakotas here toward the dinner time frame. And this will continue to kind of push off into western portions there of uh, the western portions of Minnesota into eastern Dakotas as we head toward the overnight hours. But just in general, where you can see those supercells develop and that complex of storms starting to organize across the Dakotas, we can expect, you know, three quarters of an inch and upwards of an inch and a half of rainfall across these areas to so some decent rains, again, with this type of complex as well. But looking forward toward the Father's Day weekend, the Climate Prediction Center's 6 to 10 day temperature outlook shows from June 17th through the 21st time frame, another reestablishment here of that upper level ridge will really dominate across much of the middle of the country from the northern plains, the central plains, and down through the south, you know, the deep south area, as well as the southern plains. You got that trough coming in, another trough here in the portions of the west coast and Pacific Northwest, maybe some rainier weather over there. A little bit of a trough kind of lingering across the northeast as well. And you can see some below normal precipitation underneath that ridge. You don't have a lot of rising air. You got a lot of sinking air, so not a lot of clouds underneath that ridge. And that's where you see that below normal precipitation here likely. We got that monsoon season really heating up across portions of the four corners. So likely it's not expected to be above uh, average uh, precipitation here going through the Father's Day weekend and then across portions of the Pacific Northwest under that you know shortwave trough that'll start to dig back in here across portions of the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast maybe some above normal precipitation there as well going through the 21st of June as we head towards Tuesday we got that trough continue 
uh, continuing to push into the uh, northern plains, kind of taking on an kind of taking on a negative tilt as it does so and these negative tilt troughs are ones that could produce some decent severe weather we got a lot of that heat and humidity continuing across the deep south into portions of the central and southern plains on up through the mississippi valley and that will produce some instability here as we head towards tuesday evening much of the day Tuesday may be capped off here. We got a capping inversion across much of the central plains, so not really seeing any storm activity during the day. But as we head into the evening hours, we could have some storms firing up across portions of Kansas, getting into Iowa, portions of southwestern Wisconsin, maybe even eastern Minnesota here as well. And then that'll continue even on Wednesday. We got that trough continuing. Uh, continuing to push eastward across the Midwest here on Wednesday with a cold front, a very potent cold front here across the Midwest and the Missouri Valley as we head into Wednesday afternoon. A lot of that heat and humidity not moving too much, maybe a little bit farther to the east and southeast, but still lots of 90s, hundreds to the south. We got that instability, still that lingering storm complex here across portions of Minnesota, western Wisconsin, and the northern Iowa during this time frame. A big upper level low across southern portions of the Canadian prairies will be kind of driving a cold front through portions of the Midwest. And this will continue here along the front. We could have some stronger thunderstorms with the large hail, the damaging winds, and even a couple of tornadoes not to be ruled out across portions of Wisconsin, getting down into eastern Iowa, maybe northwestern Illinois here, and into northern portions of Missouri and as well as we head towards Wednesday evening. And this will continue into the overnight hours, maybe even some strong thunderstorms getting up into Ontario here as well, crossing into the Canadian provinces there and into portions here of the upper peninsula of Michigan into the overnight hours into Thursday morning. Then as we head to Thursday, this trough will kind of more take its way farther to the north and east into, you know, Ontario and the portions of central and southeastern Canada. So not really seeing a lot of support for severe weather across the Ohio Valley or the Mid-Atlantic, but some isolated severe weather may be possible across those areas. So we'll have to see how that works out. And like I said, back across portions here of the four corners into the central southern plains, we got another ridge starting to reestablish itself as we head here towards that Father's Day weekend. And then another trough here coming on shore the Pacific Northwest with some strong jet dynamics with that as well, which could lead to some more severe weather, uh, more severe weather into the middle of the country as we head toward that third week in June. But just in general here, over the next several days, getting in towards that Father's Day weekend time frame, that Thursday, Friday, the 16th, 17th, all that active weather will stay up into southern Canada here. Some heavy rainfall across southern portions of Canada, also across the northern plains, the Pacific Northwest, and then east southeastward here into the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, portions of the northeast and mid-Atlantic here as we head towards the Father's Day weekend. Underneath that ridge, don't expect much rainfall here into Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, or Arkansas, or Louisiana, or westward here into the Four Corners because it does not look likely here at all. So uh, it's some drier weather across those areas and a worsening drought at that as we head towards that Father's Day weekend. And even farther, as we look even farther down the road here, as we head towards the June 19th, the Father's Day itself, and then towards that third week in June here through June 25th, that ridge will just continue to have some staying power across portions of the middle of the country into the southeast, and a lot of above normal temperatures there. That trough will continue to meander across the west coast, and then you'll, here you'll see that monsoon season here start to heat up across portions of the four corners and into portions here of the northern plains, maybe some above normal precipitation up into the northern plains, and then that drier weather underneath that ridge across the southeast here as well. And turning your attention to the tropics, we do have two type of uh, areas of concern here. We got one that is has a more than a 60% chance or more than a 60% probability of developing into some type of a storm or a hurricane potentially as we head into the portions of southwestern Mexican coast, right off the southwestern Mexican coast there, moving to the north and east or north, north and west. And that really could produce some stronger here waves across portions of Mexico there. And maybe even here some um, tropical rainfall across the western Mexican coast there as we head towards the next five days. Also behind that, kind of watching an area of uh, the National Weather, uh, the National Hurricane Center is kind of looking at this for an area of interest down north, down towards south, uh, you know, south portions there of Mexico and right off the Central American coast there. You definitely have to watch that um, as we head through the next five days, and I will be as well. So I'll keep you uh, here kind of updated as well as with that here if you have any vacation plans across those areas. Closer to home, kind of seeing still that, that signal across portions of southeast Texas into the Gulf Coast, especially the central and western Gulf and the Louisiana coast, of some uh, well above normal here, uh, you know, 
Uh, precipitation anomalies across these areas, maybe just some tropical rains, not a guarantee of a storm, but those, you know, the tropical waters across portions here of the Gulf of Mexico, getting into portions here of even the Atlantic, still pretty warm. So that is something we'll have to watch as we head down through the rest of June and maybe even toward the 4th of July timeframe here as well. And I will continue to watch that here as we get a little further down the road. Uh, I do thank you for watching this video. A lot to hear, inform you of, a lot of severe weather coming up. A lot of heat and humidity across the country. I hope everybody, uh, everyone stays safe through the Father's Day weekend and beyond. Do be sure to like my video. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave any comments, questions that you feel here uh, below in the chat. And also remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please help me out. I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers towards Father's Day or even the end of June. So please, please help me out. I do appreciate that very much. And I hope everybody has a, gr a great rest of their weekend and also a great rest of next week and even Father's Day weekend as well. So thank you very much and have a great Sunday, everybody.